make a beautiful shirt or a cute pair of shorts, but you're afraid they won't turn out perfect because you aren't sure how to use this confounded machine. Fear not. I'm here to help by giving you a quick tour of your sewing machine so you can learn what all these buttons and knobs are and make some fun projects. As I go over the features, you'll notice that all sewing machines have the same basic parts, but sometimes they're in different places or require a special trick to use. That's what I'm trying to show you. Let's get started. Here I have two sewing machines, a manual and a computerized model. One is very basic and the other has some complex features. One costs around $70 and the other around twice that. Almost all modern sewing machines have a foot controller and a power cord. The foot controller functions just like the gas pedal in your car. It allows you to wind your bobbins, sew forward, sew backward, and adjust your speed. The power and foot pedal plugs, the on-off button, and the hand wheel are all located on the side of the machine. Both machines can be operated manually by turning the hand wheel, which moves a series of cams and drive shafts inside the machine. Back in the day, turning the hand wheel was the only way to operate your sewing machine, and you did that by turning a hand crank or using a foot-operated treadle connected to a series of leather belts. Although the hand wheel may sound old-fashioned, it's an important feature that allows you to do precision stitching so your project looks just right. Your hand wheel also functions as a clutch that activates and deactivates the bobbin winder and needle. In the normal position, the needle moves up and down and the feed dog pulls your project through the machine. When you're winding a bobbin, the up and down motion of the needle will stop. On the computerized model, the clutch is engaged automatically by moving the bobbin winder into the active or rightmost position. On the mechanical model, you must pull the hand wheel outward as well. Your manual will tell you the exact method for engaging your bobbin winder, and I'll cover that topic in the next segment. Now, onto the top of the machine. Your spool holder, your bobbin winder, your thread guides, tension plates, and tension adjustment knob are all located on the top of the machine. The thread goes through these guides, through the tension plates, passes through these channels, hooks around the thread uptake lever, passes through another thread guide, through the eye of the needle, and out your presser foot. You also have your presser foot lever, your feed dogs, your throat plate with seam allowance markings, your bobbin, and your bobbin chase. Your top thread always comes from the spool, and your lower thread always comes from the bobbin. Note, some machines have a vertical bobbin and others like this have a horizontal or drop-in bobbin. If you have a vertical bobbin, you'll have a few extra parts including a separate bobbin holder with a built-in tension plate. Now, onto the face of the machine. Your reverse button, your tension adjustment knob, and your stitch selector tools are all located on the face of the machine. On a computerized model, you will have complete control over the length and the width of your stitch on this display. Changing the width will alter the size of your zigzag stitch, but on a straight stitch, it will change your needle position, which will alter the seam allowances. On the mechanical model, you must change the stitches manually, and you have fewer stitch functions, but it still gets the job done. There are a few other important features, like the button that lowers your feed dogs, but they're topics that deserve their own videos, so I think it's time to wrap up this segment. The one thing I hope you'll take away is that all sewing machines are similar, but at the same time, they're different. If you can use one sewing machine, you can learn to use any sewing machine. When I got this one, I spent a good deal of time reading the manual, checking out the parts, and testing all of the stitches. That's a very good way to get to know your sewing machine, and I'm sure there are still features that I haven't used. This tour should give you a good idea of what these buttons are, why they are there, and what they do. I hope this inspires you to thread up your machine and start sewing. If you have any questions, please share them in the comments area, and I'll try to find some answers. My name is Liz. This is my sewing room. Come back for more tips on winding bobbins and threading your machine in the next installments. Thanks for watching. See you soon.
Thank you.